Hi Grade Nines, we're continuing with our topic number two which is all about how we use factorizing to help us in fractions. So our previous video was on simplifying fractions and what we learned is the most important thing is you cannot simplify a fraction until there's one term over one term. And the only way to get one term over one term is to factorize. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build on that and we're going to look into multiplying and dividing fractions. So that's our heading for today and our first example, our first two examples are basically your primary school uh, fraction examples of basic multiplying and dividing fractions. So if we look at uh, example 1a, it says simplify and there's a fraction times a fraction. Now the best way to do this and the way we're going to need to in order to go forward is we're going to need to realize that we do something called cross cancelling. Now cross cancelling is when you look for something at the top and you look for something at the bottom that can simplify with each other. So in this case, 2 goes into itself once and 2 goes into 4 twice. So cross cancelling is simplifying something on the top with something on the bottom. So simplifying something on top and something at the bottom. So that's going to be our first step. Then in order to complete this we need to remember what, how do we multiply fractions. And when we multiply fractions we go top times top over bottom times bottom. So at the top of this particular fraction we have 1 times 2 which is 2 and at the bottom we have 1 times 3 which is 3. So two-thirds is our final answer. So that's how we go about multiplying fractions. How do we go about dividing fractions? Dividing fractions is, well first of all, we hate division. So I'm not too sure who's taught you division fra fractions before, but I always talk about tip and times. Now what tip and times is, is you change the division sign to multiplication sign and you tip the fraction. Now if I taught you in grade 8 I would have explained to you exactly why that works and when I see you again I absolutely would explain to you why we use tip and times but for the moment because we have more important things to learn in this video we're just going to assume that we know from grade 8 why tip and times works. So just to re repeat that you change your division sign to multiplication sign and you tip the fraction that you're multiplying by. Now that we're multiplying again, we know exactly how to multiply. How we multiply is we do some cross cancelling. So 3 goes into itself once, 3 goes into 7 9 times. So let me just write myself a note here. I'm cross cancelling. Is there anything else that cross cancels? Well, 2 goes into itself once and it goes into 4 twice. So you end up having to do a little bit of kind of neat cross cancelling because you want uh, the person to be able to see what you were doing. And then you're back to multiplying. So it's top times top over bottom times bottom. So in this case, you've got 1 times 9, which is 9 at the top, and 1 times 2 at the bottom, which is 2. Now, we don't bother changing that to a mixed number or an improper fraction or a decimal or anything like that. Oh, this is an improper fraction. We don't change it to a mixed number or a decimal. We just leave it like that. And then don't forget that you you must check that you didn't miss any simplifying. I mean, does 2 go into 9? Do they have any common factors? And no, they don't. Okay, so these two examples were meant to be a basic reminder of how we multiply and divide so that we can expand it to something like C. Now, C looks far more threatening and confusing, but it's really, really not. So let's do this a bit slowly. I see a division sign, so I'm going to change that to a multiply, and I'm going to swap that second fraction around. So x squared minus 4 over x squared plus x. I've tipped that around, so I've tipped and I've times. Your original fraction stays unchanged because you weren't dividing by that. So I've dealt with my division sign. So that's always my first step. My first step is to always change division signs. So do your tips and times. We hate division. Now my next step is I want to cross cancel. So I'm going to leave a gap there because I want to cross cancel. Now the only problem is we learned in the previous video that you can only start cancelling when there's one term over one term. Now if I look at this numerator, that's two terms. 
this is two terms this is two terms and so I cannot start the next step I didn't have this problem in A and B because they were just numbers but now that we're doing algebra you need to factorize so this is where our previous video is coming in you need to factorize absolutely everything you can in order to make one term over one term and when everything is one term everywhere then we can start cross cancelling so if I start this x in the first fraction that's just x that's one term x minus 2 doesn't have any highest common factors it's not a dots and it's not a trinomial so from the last video we learned that when I'm desperate I put a bracket around it now x squared minus 4 hopefully you recognize as a dots which is x plus 2 and x minus 2 which is looking very promising because I see an x minus 2 at the bottom the bottom I've got a highest common factor of x so it's x plus 1 so just have a look there I have factorized absolutely everything so now you may cross cancel don't forget with cross cancel with cross cancelling if you can cross cancelling a bracket you have to con cross cancel it's like a tongue twister the entire bracket so x minus 2 always do it neatly because I have to be able to give you marks for your factorizing so very neatly in pencil just make sure that I can see your factors but your x minus 2 is going to cancel with your x minus 2 your x is going to cancel with your x now just remember that anything on top can cancel with anything at the bottom it doesn't have to be in an opposite fraction it can be in the same fraction as long as you have something identical it can cancel and finally what are you left with so top times top and bottom times bottom now here I'm not really left with anything to multiply by so if I was I'd multiply the tops together and multiply the bottoms together but in this case I'm simply left with x plus 2 at the top over x plus 1 now technically every time you were cancelling we should have been saying x goes into itself once so technically you have 1 times x plus 2 and at the bottom you have 1 times x plus 1 but it really the ones really don't matter unless you're left with nothing else so question C looked far more threatening than A and B but it's actually the same concept and then we're bringing in what we learned in the previous video so let's try a couple of more question D you're multiplying so you don't have to worry about that so first things first I need to factorize absolutely everything to get one term over one term so if I have a look at my first bracket 4 is one term 8 is one term so first fraction 4 is one term the top is not one term so I'm going to take out a highest common factor of 3 and D and that leaves me with D plus 3 and what do you notice the denominator is also D plus 3 but it cannot factorize so I'm forced to make it one term by putting a bracket around it now my next term is cross cancel so anything at the top can cancel with anything at the bottom so d plus 3 cancels with d plus 3 4 goes into itself once and goes into 8 twice and that's everything I can cancel so now I'm left with the idea that I can multiply and when I multiply I multiply top times top and bottom times bottom so the nice thing about these questions is you follow the same steps every time and so it does get easier so at the top I have 3d times 2 and the bottom I have technically 1 times 1 so 3d times 2 is 60 and 1 times 1 is 1 and because it's a denominator 60 divided by 1 is 60 so I'm not going to bother writing it okay so I'm hoping you getting into this a bit next question I'm doing division which means I need to change it to a multiplication now that means I need to tip in times but this term that I'm dividing by doesn't seem to be a fraction don't forget that everything can be made into a fraction so that's x minus 3 over 1 so it means if I tip it I'm going to be multiplying by 1 over x minus 3 now fortunately that's already one term for me but my first term isn't so let me just write myself a note here um, tip in times now I need to factorize and everything is already one term except for the top of that first fraction and x squared minus x minus 6 is a trinomial 
and wonderful general Miss Hint here bet you that one of the factors is x minus 3 because if it's not x minus 3 then nothing would cancel so I've just got to figure out my other factor which I think is going to have to be a 2 because 3 times 2 will give me a 6 and there must be opposite signs so I think there must be a plus 2 now I definitely would multiply that out in my head and check because I was kind of you know guessing at what it was going to be so x minus 3 will cancel with x minus 3 because now that everything's one term over one term everywhere I can cross cancel so x minus 3 is cancel and there's nothing really left to cancel so I do top times top so x plus 2 times 1 is just x plus 2 and I'm left with 2 at the bottom cool so how bad can they get well uh, this is the last question and this is really how bad it can get this is quite a mean question and it'll probably be worth about six marks because the first mark will be for changing that to a multiply so I'm multiplying and I'm tipping my fraction over so x squared plus 2x minus 3 over 2x minus 8 so tipping times and this is x squared minus 4x over x cubed minus x squared now the reason why this is particularly difficult is every single one of these denom no, denominators and numerators are not one term. So I have to factorize everything. So what I generally do is I try to pick the easy ones first. So if I look at this numerator, highest common factor of x, so I'm left with x minus 4. So that was fairly easy. If I look at this denominator, highest common factor of x squared, so x squared and x minus 1. So both of those were fairly easy. If I look at this, mm, that's a trinomial which I don't really like. So let me go to the bottom. 2x minus 8, so that'll be 2, and that'll be x minus 4. So even before I've done the trinomial, I can see some cross cancelling. I can see that x minus 4 cancels with x minus 4. Now why I do those first is now I have a drastic hint I shouldn't say drastic, I should say I have a ginormous hint of what x plus 2, x minus 3 is going to factorize to. Because I see an x plus 1 there, I'm pretty sure, sorry, x minus 1, I'm pretty sure x minus 1 will be a factor. Now what would the other factor have to be? Well, 1 times 3 will give me 3, and the signs must be different, so that's plus. Now I definitely would check that out, because I was just making an assumption that the question will simplify, maybe it doesn't. Now if you multiply out that very quickly, it actually does work. So now I can cancel my x minus 1 with my x minus 1. So what am I left with? I'm left with x plus 3 multiplied by x, and I've got an x squared at the bottom, and a 2. So if I just pause, I've got an x and an x plus 3, and at the bottom I've got an x squared times 2. Now just have a look there. Do you notice that I could have actually also cancelled some x's? Because I have one x at the top and two at the bottom. So I'm actually going to be left with an x at the bottom, but also um, a 2. So I've just written the 2 there, and an x plus 3 at the top. So I could have actually simplified those x's in the previous line. Now that's definitely the worst it can get. Why is it so many marks? Well, there would be one mark for tippings and timesing, one mark for factorizing the top, bottom, top, bottom, and then simplifying. So this could be as much as six marks, and it seems so threatening, but all it is is factorize everything and then cancel what you can. So a couple of ones for you to try. Exercise 8.13 on page 249 and then over the page 250 there's 10 questions it's a really really good uh, revision of all your factorizing don't forget that you can always come back and look at your notes or you can rewatch parts of the video and please please send questions if you have them right that'll be the end of our factorizing section it's been quite long um, and we've done three types of factorizing and then we've done a first example of where we use factorizing we will be using it again and after this particular exercise that you're going to do now, there'll also be some mixed revision to tie this all together. Well done.